In this video, we're going to create the toolpaths for the child's name plaque you can see in the images on the screen. This works with the vectors that we created in the drawing tutorial. And in that, we made sure that we assigned those vectors onto particular layers dependent upon the toolpaths we wanted to create. In this video, we're going to show you how to select those using the vector selection tool available in each toolpath form. Ultimately, it'll give us a set of toolpaths that will create the part that you can see in the software here. Let's start by opening a new copy of the software now. Let's come over and click on the icon to open an existing file. And from the project folder, we're going to select name plaque underscore vector, which is the file that was created in the drawing tutorial. Let's go ahead and click open and we can take a look at those vectors. Now the key aspect for these is that they were organized onto different layers depending what type of toolpath we wanted to use on a particular set of vectors. If we click on the layer drop down, I'm just going to undraw the layers using the light bulb here and switch these on one at a time. And as I switch them on, you'll see that there are different sets of vectors which correspond to the toolpaths that we're going to calculate. Now when we calculate these toolpaths, we're going to use the fact that we've organized the vectors onto the layers in order to make it very easy for us to select those vectors using the vector selection option within the toolpaths form. Let's go ahead and close this layer manager now and we'll click on the icon here to switch over to the toolpaths tab. Let's come over and click on the set button under material setup. And before we check the values for our material, please note that if you plan to actually machine this example, then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available, and the material that you're going to use. With that said, let's take a look here, and we can see that we're working with a Z0 off the top of the block, material thickness of 5 eighths of an inch, XY datum in the lower left and I'm happy with the rapid and home position values that we've got set there so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. For our first toolpath we're going to profile around the outline of the letters with a V-bit tool in order to add a decorative bevel and to give the effect that some letters sit in front of others. Let's click on the icon here for the profile toolpath and please make sure that you have the Show Advanced Toolpath Options box checked at the top here, as we'll need the long version of this form to access the vector selection area at the bottom. And we'll come to that in a moment. For this toolpath, we're going to have a start depth of 0, a cut depth of 0 0.1 inches, and then we're going to click the Select button from the Tool Database, and we're going to choose from the V-Bit tools a 90 degree half inch V-Bit, and I'm just going to take the default settings for this and hit OK. Now I don't want the tool to go around the outside or inside of the vectors but I want it to actually follow on the vectors so the tip of the tool, the center or the point will actually drive along the vector itself. Next we can ignore the next couple of sections for this particular toolpath and scroll down towards the bottom and here we're going to use this vector selection tool and the way that we've set the layers up in order to choose the vectors we want to machine rather than needing to pick them from the 2D view. So I'm going to click on the selector button and in the form I need to enter the criteria for which I'd like to select the vectors for this particular toolpath. In this case I want to choose open vectors and closed vectors on a selected layer only so I'm going to make sure this option is checked here and for this particular toolpath I'm going to do it on the V profile layer so if I check that box you'll see that in the 2D view that's automatically selected the vectors based on these parameters. Now I could if I wanted to check the associate with toolpath option and that would remember this for next time I calculated this toolpath. In this case though I'm not going to do that I'm just going to hit close, I'm going to enter a name for this toolpath so we'll call it V profile and we'll go ahead and hit the calculate button and we'll see that the software automatically closes that toolpath form, opens the preview toolpath form and goes into the 3D view. We can come up and click on the button to preview the selected toolpath and the software will animate that and show us what it's going to look like. If we want to add a bit more contrast we could choose to give that toolpath a particular colour so let's check that option there just use the drop down for the colours here and let's pick this dark red colour. 
So now you can see in the 3D view that it's really highlighted the area that's going to be machined away. If we zoom in, you can see the effect that that tool's going to have of making the letters look like they sit in front of the ones to the left of them. Let's close the preview toolpath form now and we'll go back to the 2D view by clicking on the tab at the top there and we'll do this just so we can see the vectors that we're selecting. And now what I want to do is pocket out the area above the tabs here. We just want to take an eighth of an inch of material off using these rectangular vectors here as a boundary. So I'm going to come over and click on the icon for the pocket toolpath. So I say we just want to machine down a, a, an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put in a value of 0.125 for our cut depth. I'm going to click on the select button here. And from the tool database, I actually we need to add a new tool. This job has been drawn to use a 3 16 inch end mill as the tool that's going to be used to do the cutouts. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the tool database here. And a good way to do it is just to take a tool that you've already got and make a copy of it. So in this case we could take the quarter inch end mill and use the copy button here. Now with this second one selected what I want to do is edit the values for this tool. So I could come down and put in the values of 3 16 so I'm going to highlight the diameter there, I'm going to type in 3 divided by 16 and hit the equal sign to calculate that. Now if I come down and hit apply, what the software will do is give me a warning because I've done something here that could be potentially very difficult to troubleshoot and that's that I've changed the tool diameter but I haven't changed the tool name. So if I hit OK we can see there my diameter is as I indicated but because I haven't edited the tool name it could be quite misleading if I saw that in the list here and didn't realise it applied to a different diameter. So having had that warning I can now come in here, I can update the name at the top here as well. Now we can hit apply and I can hit OK and we'll have chosen that 3 16 inch tool for this particular toolpath. Now moving down the form we're going to ignore the section on using a larger area clearance tool and the clear pocket options. I'm just going to leave that set to raster there. I'm not going to worry about ramping for this particular toolpath but I am going to come down and use the vector selection option, click on the selector button this will remember the parameters that we used the last time we were in here and so all I need to change at this point in time is to uncheck the V profile layer and this time I want to only machine vectors on the tabs layer so I'm going to check that option there and you'll see in the 2D view that this has been updated with my new selection criteria and I can go ahead and hit close I'm going to give this toolpath a name and we'll hit calculate so now I can preview the selected toolpath and that will show me that being machined down there. I can zoom in if I want to see that and you can see how that's going to be cut down uh, in order to relieve the top area of my tab. Now let's close the preview toolpath form, come back over to the 2D view again. Now what I want to do is pocket down these holes here in order to make slots that my tabs are going to go into. So let's click on the icon for the pocket toolpath. In this case I know the height of my tabs here is 3 eighths of an inch so I'm going to make the cut depth of this 0.375 to machine these slots out to be deep enough to accept those tabs. I'm going to use the same tool here so we've already got the 3 16 inch end mill selected. I'm going to ignore the larger area clearance tool. I'm going to use the raster option again and this time I want to add a pocket allowance to this toolpath. That means I'm going to slightly oversize these to make sure that my tab will fit into them. If I cut them exactly to size then it may be too tight of a fit. Certainly there will be no room for glue or anything like that. So here let's put in a small negative allowance to oversize these pockets. So I'm going to put in minus 0 0.01 of an inch and then we can come down and click on the selector button this time I'm going to change from tabs to the slots in the uh, layer selection options here and you can see that's updated in the 2D view. Now we can hit close, I'm going to change the name of this toolpath and hit calculate. So that's opened the preview form again. We can come up and click on the button to preview selected toolpaths and see the result of that in the 3D view. Sometimes it can also be useful to interrogate a toolpath in the 2D view as well. Let's just close the preview toolpath form here 
Let's come over and click on the 2D view tab at the top there to switch back into our 2D view mode. What I want to do is draw the visibility of the toolpath here so I can see it in the 2D view. To do that, I'm just going to check the box next to the toolpath and we'll see that appear. What that's going to show me by default is just the lines of the toolpath. If I want to zoom in on that, I can click in the 2D view and just roll the mouse wheel towards my cursor there and we can see how that looks. In addition to seeing these lines of the toolpath, there's also an option at the bottom here that I can check that says solid and that will show me a shaded view of that toolpath. And if I look here, I can see that the shaded area, the part that I'm cutting is actually coming past the edge of my vector and that's the effect of that negative allowance we put on that pocket toolpath. So it's showing me it's going to be slightly overcut, hopefully to give me enough space to slot the parts together. Certainly that allowance value may vary depending on the material you're using, your tooling, what kind of finish you're planning to put on here or whether you need to leave space for glue or not. Let's go ahead and continue to our last toolpath now. I'm just going to click back in the 2D view to make sure the focus is on it and hit F on the keyboard in order to zoom that to fit. For our final toolpath we're going to cut everything out. So let's come up and click on the icon for the profile toolpath I'm going to set the cut depth to be the thickness of the material and I can automatically call up the depth of program for the block here by typing in the letter Z and then hitting the equals key on the keyboard and that'll just bring up the numerical value for the thickness of my material. Next I'm going to select a tool and I want to come back to my 3 16th inch end mill and hit OK. I'm going to cut outside the vector in this case, uh, I am going to add some tabs to the toolpath, but before I do that, I need to make sure the correct vectors are selected. So I'm going to come down to the vector selection area of the form, click on the selector button, and this time I'm going to uncheck the slots layer, and I'm going to check the cutout layer, and again, I should see those automatically selected from my 2D view. Now I can hit close. Um, it's possible for me to add tabs to those vectors. The tabs are just going to leave little pieces of material to hold the part in place when we cut it out. So let's check the box there. I need to enter the size of the tab I want to leave. In this case we'll enter a length of 0.2 of an inch and a thickness of 0.15. I could uh, create triangular tabs if I want but in this case I think I'm going to prefer to leave a standard rectangular tab. I'm going to click on the edit tabs button and here I have a choice to enter a constant number or to enter a constant distance and hit the add tabs button or I can just come over and manually add them by going onto a part of the vector where I want to add a tab and clicking. What that will do is put this little yellow square with a T in it showing me where the tab is going to be situated. Now I can work my way around picking different positions where I may want to add a tab to hold the part in place. So we'll just put five on the top there and then we'll come down and place maybe four on the bottom here. So I'm happy with those positions I can hit close, we can scroll down to the bottom of the form and we'll just call this toolpath profile cutout and hit calculate. Again with the preview toolpath form having opened we can come up click on the button to preview selected toolpath. Having a look at this I can see that that looks okay, I can see this parts being held in place this part's being held in place, but if I look here I can see now one of the real valuable parts of having this preview is the fact I can see the middle of the O here is not being held in place. Because that's kind of on the inside, I've forgotten to add any tabs, and so potentially this could fly off the machine, break my tool, or end up damaging the dust collection. So what I want to do, as soon as I notice that, is just to go ahead and double click on the toolpath again there, if we click on the edit tabs button that will throw me back into the, the 2D view and I can just come over and pop a couple of tabs in to hold the centre part of the O in place there. Hit close, scroll down and hit calculate and now if we just reset the preview I can click on the button to preview all toolpaths. It'll work its way through everything we've calculated and now I can see exactly how that's going to look when we're finished. I can see I've got that being held in place now everything else looks good and we're ready at this point to go ahead and output these toolpaths to our CNC. So now we can just close the preview toolpath form, click on the icon here to save a toolpath and at the moment I have the option checked to output all visible toolpaths to one file. 
I'm going to come back to that in a moment. For, for now, I'd like to uncheck that. What this is going to do now is pick up whichever of my toolpaths is the currently selected one, which just happens to be the V Profile toolpath at the moment. That's the only toolpath out of this set that has a 90 degree V bit on it. So with that selected, I'd choose the appropriate post processor for my machine from this list and then click on the Save Toolpaths button and just give that file a name, hit Save and then we'd be ready to send that over to the CNC. In this case I actually have three toolpaths that all share the same tool and rather than running individual toolpaths and saving them individually sometimes it can be more beneficial to output them as a single file. To do that you need to make sure their visibility is checked by hitting the box next to them here and putting the check mark in it now I can come up and check the box here to output all visible toolpaths to one file. By putting that check mark in here is essentially making those toolpaths visible. Now the software is just going to pick up the order that I've got these toolpaths in the toolpath list here, show me that order up the top here. I need to make sure that the cutout is being done last, which it is. And again, then it's just a case of checking your post processor, hitting save, and now I'd be able to save a single toolpath file with all those different toolpaths in it and run them as a single file on the machine, saving myself time. With that complete, let's go ahead and just hit close on the save toolpaths form and come up and save a copy of this file in the project folder. Go to file, save as. And we'll just call this nameplaque underscore toolpath.crv and hit save. And so if you want, you can load that version of the file and see it exactly as we've created it in the video. In this video, you've seen a number of useful techniques when creating toolpaths, not least of which was that ability to use vectors on particular layers and select them using the vector selection option in the toolpaths. Of course, you have to remember to have pre-organized your vectors onto appropriate layers to be able to make best use of that. That concludes this tutorial.